Fight Hustler here, and today I'm going to give you my spin on the top five beginner reseller mistakes. What's going on guys and gals? Chris the Bonafide Hustler coming to you live from the inside of my office. Whoosh. Make sure you check out the free guide at bonafidehustler.com. That'll definitely help you out, especially if you are a beginner and you want to learn some really awesome things that you can buy used and sell for profit. And you can find these things at thrift stores and garage sales primarily. So go pick it up. Let's get to the video. So I decided to make this video today because, you know, over many years I've been seeing a lot of the same consistent mistakes that beginner resellers are making. And for me, it's just tough to see these mistakes being made all the time. So whether you're a beginner or an intermediate, let's see if you're making any of these mistakes. All right, so mistake number one is buying an item because it's neat or not looking up the item whatsoever. You're just buying it because, oh, it's cheap and it's, it's kind of cool, you know? If you're buying items that are neat or sort of cool and you're like, ah, oh, but it was only like, like one dollar it was only five bucks you know a hundred of those things and you could be broke as a beginning reseller you don't want that you want a string of home runs under your belt so you really want to only pop on items that you absolutely know about and you certainly don't want to be buying an item because it's just neat if you don't know much about the item especially if it's used you're probably gonna have a really hard time selling it and it's probably not worth your time in the first place that's definitely mistake number one of people that are buying items that they just don't know anything about they just maybe sell it on someone else's video and they're just like, yeah, I heard the brand and bought the brand. As a beginning reseller, make sure you know brands very well because every brand has some kind of dud, typically. The number two mistake that I see out there is not really having an active plan of where you're gonna sell the item. So suppose you buy an item and you know it's pretty much profitable, but you have zero clue of where you're gonna sell it. You just buy it. And this is an indicator of you not knowing what your time is worth, much less the fees behind whatever avenue that you're gonna resell it on. You're just buying the item because maybe you heard about it somewhere and uh, you don't know too much about it, but you're probably in the profit. You just have no action plan after that. You gotta have a plan. And that plan has to be you know, listing the item properly. It has to include awesome keywords. And you gotta know where it's headed the second that you are considering buying this item. If you've bought the item and you have no idea where it's going, Huge mistake. It's probably gonna it's probably gonna go on your floor into that amazing death pile, you know, of just regret and sorrow when you could be reselling really amazing items. So definitely know where you're gonna sell an item when you pick it up. When I buy items at garage sales or thrift stores, I know exactly where these items are destined to go. I don't buy items because they're cool or they're neat. Now, if I buy them because they're cool or they're neat, I am planning to keep them. But I always have my avenues ready for any item that I am buying out there. This chair is squeaking. Free 99 does have some costs. Wow. The third mistake I see out there is looking up an item. All right, so you're taking the right, you know, direction. You're actually looking up an item before you buy it, but you're not understanding velocity, variance, the conditions of the items that you're seeing sold, or maybe failure to understand the fundamental item itself. But you're pretty close to popping on it, or maybe you're popping on it. You just have no idea about velocity which is how fast an item sells typically in the marketplace that you're gonna put it at. You don't know about variants, which are like colors or different models. And then you don't know anything about conditions. I mean, when you're dealing with, you know, hypeware, there's conditions to that kind of stuff. When you're dealing with uh, electronics, there are conditions to that kind of stuff. Does it operate properly? Does it have the remote control? Does it come with all the other extra stuff? You know, you gotta understand conditions because the condition of the item that you're buying might not be the condition of the item that you're seeing in the market. That might be one that's an, it's probably one that's in much better condition or a completely different variant that's super desirable or some other characteristic that has increased that velocity of that specific item itself. And maybe you're holding not the exact item, you know, but something really close. So you gotta understand the item at a fundamental level before you get into understanding velocity, variance, and things like that. You gotta understand why, what makes this item valuable in the first place? Are there any similar looking items or variants or models that are extremely valuable? From there, you can kind of understand why velocity matters or why an item might sell faster than another item that's very similar to it. Fourth mistake that I see out there are people that resell that have no idea truly about the avenues that things are gonna go on. They don't understand the fees behind the avenue, whether it be eBay, 
they don't understand really what their time is worth in the end. They don't really calculate, you know, the hours spent sourcing, uh, listing, um, maybe even more research, packing it up. They don't really understand these things. They just know like, oh, it's profitable, you know, and that there are a lot of tools out there. You know, if you're going to buy an item, you should really consider hard putting it on Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace and things like that. The worst that can happen is it doesn't sell on those two avenues and it just sells on eBay. But the best thing that can happen is it starts selling on those other two avenues and you start to realize, wow, these other two avenues besides eBay, which I thought everyone was all about, these other two avenues have some serious power behind them. And you, only over time and triple listing or double listing an item will you understand in your specific market what is desirable on a local level versus what isn't. None of this stuff out there is scary, all right? So that's the very first thing. If you're thinking eBay is complicated, it's not complicated whatsoever. Now, it might get complicated for people with 2,000, 3,000, 5,000 items. I get it. But for the most part, if you're just dealing with like, you know, one-off used items, it's not complicated. It really isn't. I personally think Amazon's a lot more complicated, but that's like a whole nother ball game. That's probably more of an intermediate reseller to an expert reseller. Number five, and some people are gonna agree and disagree with me, all right, but check, check this out and hear me out. And by the way, uh, make sure you comment down below maybe some other ones, because I do wanna make another video on top of this one with some other mistakes that beginners make or maybe intermediates make. This is certainly not all of them. But let's talk about number five. Number five is drowning in free YouTube or Reddit content. As a beginner, you might not understand the philosophy of invest in yourself. This is really, really important. There are many ways that you can invest in yourself, okay? You can actually get paid options from your favorite YouTube creators. You can join accelerator type courses or groups. You can even partner up, all right? And spend time with people that are much better than you that live maybe in your hometown or something like that. Either way, I think one of the worst things you can do is just drown in free content because yeah, it's free, you know, but you're gonna have to search a lot to get that really good gold. If you wanna become an intermediate or an expert quicker, you should consider investing in yourself. Some way, it doesn't matter how you do it, you can use udemy.com if you wanna learn how to do ads or how to really do eBay or Shopify or something like that. Follow your favorite YouTube resellers and almost all of the, you know, the top ones will have some sort of paid or accelerated options available. Or maybe just join a group that, you know, has some sort of barrier to entry of, you know, something like that. That is like right up your alley, maybe your niche, that kind of stuff. Failure to invest in yourself, and this just goes through everything in life, is a huge mistake. If you think you're worth it and you want to get, you know, kind of out of the rat race quicker, I guess we can just apply that term to that, then much like any standardized education, you kind of have to pay for it. You know, I, I at least think that way. In case in point, when I was a beginner reseller or an intermediate reseller, I made mistakes. And one of those mistakes was there were just no real paid options back in the day that I could, that I could accelerate me uh, in my knowledge. And it was a huge mistake. I had to learn all this crap on my own. And it took so many more years and so many more mistakes, it was ridiculous. You know, now I have a vast knowledge of things to resell, which is good. And it's like, yeah, I earned it, you know, but I, you know, but I forget who says this. Maybe it's Warren Buffett. It's like, it's great to make mistakes, like just kind of ha learn from other people's mistakes. There was something along that line, like, uh, you know, don't pay for mistakes, like learn from other people's mistakes. And that's just what it is. A lot of the top reseller YouTubers, um, you know, have made tons of mistakes and they've been in the game for many, many, many years. And now they finally have some paid content and stuff like that. I really think follow your favorite ones and start looking into what they are offering. It could even be affiliate based for all I know. You know, like just look into what look into what they're offering, see what you gravitate towards, invest in yourself and take the fast way out. Now, if you don't do that, there is plenty of free content, but to get real gems, it takes a much longer time. It really depends on what kind of individual you are. I just think it's a big mistake not investing in yourself. All right, guys, so that is the five top reseller beginner mistakes out there that I think. What did I miss? You put it down below. I mean, I probably didn't miss it. I'll just probably put on another video, but put down below what you think another reseller mistake is. Let's help those beginners out there if they watch this video. I liked hanging out with you today on this video. Take it easy. Goodbye.